down till it's break down, break down. 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 Down till it's break down. We record. Yo, yo, yo. You already know it's coming to you live, GTM TV. It's your boy GTM 2J. I got my co host in here. I am Queso. Yo. And today we got our special guest, that boy KB, Cool Beats. And we got my boy Franco in here, uh, Good Cash and Backstreet. How y'all doing today? What's going on, man? I'm feeling good, yeah, man. That's that's smooth. Man. Yeah, yeah. All right, so this right here is called the breakdown. You know what I'm saying? So we getting into the breakdown of which I got going on and how y'all got started and which I got going on. So for the people that don't know y'all, get them a little background from where y'all from. Shit, I'm from Stone Mountain. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying the East Side, you know, the East Side, not East Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Big difference. Big difference. The real East Side. You know what I'm saying? Man. Okay, B. I'm from Arkansas. Sure. Murder Mountain. Arkansas. Yeah. I've been out here since like 2013, though, so I've been been in Atlanta for a minute. Okay. All right, cool, cool. So, how y'all got into the background of which I do well? Well, for those that don't know which I do, what is it that y'all do? Shit, KB, I'll let you go first, man. Shit, man, I can't even. It's a, I do everything, man. I own men, I base men, I produce, engineer, I shoot videos. Shit, let's keep going. But yeah, that, for the most part, that's what I do. Definitely. Yeah, like yeah, something slight like that. I was about to say shit, and I do everything too, just like on the behind the scenes too. You know what I'm saying? As far as like management, artist development, life insurance agent, you know. Oh, smoke shop owner also. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Jack of all trades as well. No, I, sure. I, I see y'all shirts and what y'all got going on. What, what, what's that y'all got going on? That's y'all yeah, companies that's or something? That's the brand right there, man. Man, I basically y'all tap in, y'all come book. All uh, that we 24 hours. I like those. I got on, you know what I'm saying, rocking up the Backstreet Lifestyle clothing brand. You know what I'm saying? Me and my bro, Coke Cash. Okay. So let's get into the background of what you do. You say you do um, life insurance, artist development, and all that. So. Well, let's get into the insurance part. How'd you get into that? Honestly, it was on like, it was really like on some like some accident shit for real. Cause like uh, one of my old teachers, you know what I'm saying? Like I ran into him, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I was running into him ever since I graduated, you know what I'm saying, out of high school. You know what I'm saying? I, I still stay in the area or whatever. He still worked at the school. And then uh, he knew I was in like far as the music or whatever. And like niggas rap or whatever. And then, you know what I'm saying? All the other little shit that was going on. So he was like, man, I see you got a business mindset and a vision. Like, and outside of that, you know what I'm saying? At the same time, a lot of niggas was dying. Like, I lost a couple partners, like, a couple months prior to, you know what I'm saying, this happening. You know what I'm saying? And then, next thing you know, he was like, he, you know what I'm saying, talking to me about it. I was like, man, fuck it. I'll do that shit. And like, niggas need life insurance. You know what I'm saying? Like, Definitely. In this dead time, niggas getting killed left and right every time you cut on the team. Right, niggas getting killed by niggas. Niggas getting killed by cops. Niggas getting killed by car crashes. Niggas getting killed by they bitch. Bitches getting killed by they niggas. Like, I ain't got no way to pay for these killings either. Facts. Like, you can't have beef and ain't got no, you know what I'm saying, talking about you love your family and leaving them in debt. Like, leaving them fucked up in the end. Bury you. Crazy. Sad. Like, you want to be a cowboy, you want to goddamn gang bang and do all this and then the third, and your family don't know. That's backwards. All right, so um, let's speak about the artist management. How'd you, how'd you get into that? Oh, uh, shit, my bro, one of my close friends, uh, Coca Cash. All right, we started out doing shirts, like coming up, you know what I'm saying, with a little clothing line or whatever, realized niggas needed some bread. And at the same time, my older siblings, like they was into promotion and shit. You know what I'm saying, as far as like in the clubs and like, Niggas try, like, you know, high school niggas, you know what I'm saying, doing the right, everybody trying a little rapping shit out. Next thing you know, I realized I ain't like my voice. They should have dug. All right, 
Coco was good at the shit, you know what I'm saying? I was like, shit, like, I'm gonna manage you, you gonna rap, and we gonna go from there. And then, like, yeah, that was it. I just stuck with it. All right. So, KB, let's get into you. So, you say you do um, engineering, beats, producing, and you got your own brand and your own company. So, how'd you get started and what you got going? Oh, uh, shit. I had a studio my whole life, so studio shit been going on forever. I opened up the basement with my boys in, like, 2017. So, as a brand, I've like, been pushing it fully since 2017. So, yeah. And all the engineering shit just came from me, having the studio, growing up. Yeah, yeah. So, Same with the beats. Okay, so I was from the X. Got to talk to mic. I meant to ask this before. Like, uh, you said you moved here from Arkansas, like in 2013. Yeah. How you like it out here? I love the shit. I don't even go back to my hometown like that for real. Though. I ain't, you feel me? I love my hometown, but there ain't nothing there for me. So. Was it easy for you to adapt coming down? Yeah, here? yeah, like, I got straight to it. I probably went through, like, two groups of friends before I found my people. Yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't no, I had a good experience. I used to love going to school. I used to love being in Atlanta. Yeah. You feel me? Everything different. It's a whole different vibe. Where I'm from Arkansas, you ain't catching none of that for real. You know, most people, um, you got to be a certain type of person to take a type of risk to even you yeah, know, yeah. move from one place to another. Well, nah, no cap. I didn't even want to move to none at first, I swear. Because I had a girlfriend at the time. <laughs> oh. And you feel me? I wasn't even trying to leave her. Damn. Then, you know, oh, that when, puppy I moved, love. when I moved to Atlanta, I was in 11th grade. So, okay. like, mid 11th grade when I moved out here. So, it's like, I'm about to graduate now. I got to move and leave my friend. I can't graduate with my friends. I got to, you feel me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Make I new friends. That. So, that's yeah, the only yeah, reason I didn't want to move just yet. But I'm glad I did move while I was still in school. It got me a little head start. I can meet people, you feel me? I was meeting people every day at school. Met somebody new every day, got now. Passing out my Instagram. What's your Instagram? What's your Instagram? I'm trying to build my shit up, you feel me? So let's speak on that. Like, even, um, you know, coming to a different place and even, like, building like that, like, you know, you out here promoting yourself. Like, what's some of, like, the, the struggles that you even went through trying to do that, getting people to, like, fuck with you? Man, I done been through hella struggles, man. I done got raided by the police. I done got down. I done been down bad. Ain't nobody know shit. Landlord wouldn't let me renew my lease. I done got kicked out of studios, because you feel me shit going on. I'm just trying to run my business, niggas. White people think we selling drugs, and you feel me, all type of shit. Man, well, I ain't can't see a black man, a black man really doing his thing the legal way, so. It be a lot of ups and downs. They ain't always just smooth, like, you feel me? So we'll like keep you going, like even going have to deal with all that type of shit. Like get, shit, the people done. around me, the people around me, everybody bring that energy. So you feel me? Once you see everybody with that same energy, got now it's not just me. You feel me? It's not just me. Like right, the people around me keep me going. Right, I see one of my partners making a song. One of my partners making a beat. That's gonna make me get up. Oh shit, that shit hard. I gotta got you know. And everybody is doing something. Everybody do it. Like that's what we do for a living. So. Definitely. So y'all motivate blessing. each other. Yeah, yeah, we motivate each other. Definitely. And just seeing other people who done already took off, you feel me, out the studio, who, that, that's the motivation. You, I done seen it done before, so I know why this shit is done. You know, being that, um, I don't know if you want to put your age out there. How, how old are you? I'm 26. Real young nigga, man, doing his thing, man. So... Being at the age that you are, like, do you feel like accomplished at what you've done already, or do you feel like? I don't feel accomplished, nah, not yet. I feel like I'm doing good, you feel me? Sometimes I look around and just be like, now. But I still look at myself like the same nigga, like, you feel me? Like, sometimes I have to sit myself down and just look at what all, you feel me? What all that's happening, I'm still going, like, Business been open, what, six, seven years now, like, yeah. so. So, Franco. What going on? Tell us, tell us about the struggles of um, artist development and artist management dealing with the artists. Oh, uh, it can be a lot, you know what I'm saying? It can be a lot of different ones, you know what I'm saying? Because 
I didn't deal with a lot of different artists over the years. You know what I'm saying? Especially, like I said, like I started out with Coca Cash, but with everything that me and him was doing and everything else I had going on, like it brought other artists, you know what I'm saying, my way in a sense. You know what I'm saying? So, but what a lot of artists don't understand is shit ain't free. A lot of shit ain't cheap. And ain't nobody gonna put more in than you put into yourself. You know what I'm saying? And that becomes like a major problem. And then a lot of, and then especially like with the times now, a lot of artists get stuck with trying to follow the trend or try to follow what's going, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, basically yeah, trying to follow the trend instead of trying to create the trend. And it's like, nigga, why? You know what I'm saying? Every artist that didn't really like took off and excelled, like they started or set it a trend. You know what I'm saying? Like rather they got down, took some shit that was already known around their city or whatever and then decided to <laughs> take off with it and really made it like popular to like nationwide or to the world or whatever like they started instead of the trend they got down decided to be different you know what i'm saying and didn't box they self in they got down yeah so do you have any regrets hell no nah, because i feel like i wouldn't be where i am today i wouldn't know what i know and if i didn't go through all the bullshit i went through like, fuck the good shit, all right? You know what I'm saying? It's all the bullshit that really, like, built me and made me stronger because, like, if I can get through this, I can get through that. And it was like, as more shit kept happening, it was like, I got none of the shit, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, it is what it is. Like, it's life, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever happened, like, I'm not gonna let that shit stop me. I'm not gonna let that shit, let that shit knock me down. You know what I'm saying? Like, it can get testing. You know what I'm saying? It can be like, you know what I'm saying, where you into the mode of contemplation, you know what I'm saying? But that's life in general about whatever, you know what I'm saying? But like, when you're really passionate and want to do something, all uh, right, you ain't gonna let shit stop you. Mm. JB, you got any regrets in anything? You any regrets? In yeah. Hell no, I ain't got no regrets. Shit, I live with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't care. Like, I can't, this shit, I'm trying to think. Do I? Do I? Hey, kid you not. Got a tat on my arm. Life is a gamble. Oh, yeah, this shit a gamble. Like, everything everything that I ever did is why I'm here right now. So, you feel me? I could have did something different and been higher, but I'm not looking at it like that. I'm, you feel me? This shit in my face right now. I'm going by what's in my face right now. Hey, you want to know? planning for my future, too, but you feel me? We got to handle this shit right here. You know something crazy that you just said? I feel exactly where you're coming from. Like, you could have chose another option and been higher, but I guarantee you, because I feel this way. Because I feel the same with exactly what you yeah. said. But you, I bet you know for a fact that you would have got knocked down up there and didn't know how to handle the shit. That too. That or, thing I'm going through right now is just building me to, the, to get to that point. You know what I'm saying? And then outside of that, you wouldn't have the knowledge that you have yeah, that too. if you didn't, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, and you know, that's the main thing. Like, um, in life, you got to really have experiences to even be able to tell people how to go through shit. You know, you can read a book about anything, but it's a difference when you actually in that situation. Facts. You know, you can read up. How do I go and rent a um, building? You know what I'm saying? How do I become an engineer? How do I become a producer? But nobody tell you about the the harsh realities of that shit that can go on as an engineer. Yeah. You might deal with a client that's coming late, and then the nigga want to be short on the money. Yeah, or shit like that. Producer. Get your money before they start that session. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to get them deposit, but initially when people start, they don't know these things because when you trying to do business... No, I, learned, I learned about... Everything I do, even having the event space. It's another thing, we got the event space going like, we didn't have a situation with that. But me growing and learning, you feel me? It's just growth and learning. Like, yeah. as long as you taking it in and you feel me, taking that in and putting it, you are gonna beat that next step. Matter of fact, being young entrepreneurs, how do y'all get the business that y'all wanna acquire versus getting the people that you really ain't looking for? Well, first of all, I ain't want to acquire none of this shit. This shit wasn't 
You feel me? I wasn't thinking when I was younger, oh, I'm gonna be a studio owner, I'm gonna have an event space, I'm gonna... Only thing I wanted to do was make beats or be a rapper, you feel me? Like, it went... <laughs> I, ain't, I wasn't looking at it like that. That shit just came to me, so... I feel like, well, that's just me as a person. I go with the flow, so... I quit my job just to open the studio so I wouldn't have to go to work, just to make a little money so I wouldn't have to go to work, but me... In that moment, doing that got me here to this day. You feel me? And that was seven years ago. So you took so, a risk on yourself. Took a risk. Got but I didn't take a risk thinking, oh, I'm about to get here with it. No, I just took that risk because I was tired of going to work. I wanted to be at home in the studio. I wanted to do what I love. But me doing what I love got me to a, a higher place. And you know, a lot of people really don't chase their dream like yeah. that. Well, a lot of people be scared, for real. Like, a lot of people talk about talk about what they want to do, but a lot of motherfuckers be scared. That's why I don't like talking. I like putting that Doing action it. in. Like, you feel me? A lot of motherfuckers real life be scared. Like, oh, shit, if I get this building, how I'm going to pay the bills? Get the building. Bring what's needed to the table, and it's going to happen. Like, you, you can't see it unless you in it. Like, that's why I be trying to tell motherfuckers. You can't see it unless you in it. I'm going to tell y'all like this, right? For everybody... That had that wants to get into some type of entrepreneur field, whatever it is. One very two things you need to know. Your first couple of years, you gonna be broke as fuck. You gonna be broke. Like when I opened my studio, I wasn't worried about the money. I opened my studio. Got get thinking, that flow. When I opened my studio, I said as long as I can make more than what I worked at Walgreens. By the way, I had one job ever. Worked at Walker as soon as I graduated high school for like a year and quit that and opened the studio. But when I was working at Walgreens, I was probably getting paid like seven twenty-five an hour. You feel me? Seven twenty-five an hour. Like this, like I remember You feel me? Y'all know. You feel me? Y'all know what's going on. Like anybody work for that at one at one point, but seven twenty-five. I said, as long as I can get paid more than seven twenty-five, I'm good. I can make ten dollars an hour. I'm like, I'd be straight. You feel me? So that's exactly how I started my studio. I started my studio and I opened it up at fifteen dollars an hour. That's hey, I was why, just for That's say, why my shit really boosted. Like that's it did. how I met him. You feel me? Cause yeah, everybody man. tapped in. And then we was hard. You feel me? I got hard as engine. I got my boy Teasy. I had my boy Minor. You feel me? And we was going crazy to the point where the first month of me opening that studio, I had to move. I opened the studio at my auntie's house. My her basement. basement. Shout out to her auntie. Ba- shout out to my auntie. Shout out. You feel me? I opened the studio at my auntie's basement. And uh, shout out to the one way man. Me teasing, my, we was getting so much money, but it wasn't like a lot of money because it's fifteen dollars an hour. So, but we getting enough money to go get a crib now. It's you feel me? It's progress. So we like fuck it, goddamn. We can't keep all these folks coming in auntie house. We getting too big. We getting bigger than that. This first money in like we was in there for like two months. Got up out of auntie house after I quit my job. Like two months after I quit, and move right next house, door. Right next door, like hey, that shit was so hard. house. Full basement, everything, like, you feel me? That shit Had a studio on every floor. Shit like that, but even then, I learned from situations back then, you feel me? Like, money-wise, and, but still, it's just a growing process. You just gotta, and you can't, a lot of motherfuckers wanna look at shit for the money. You can't look at shit for the money. Like, if that's what you wanna do, that's what you really love, like, especially some shit like this, there's a million motherfuckers who got a studio. It's a million motherfuckers who take pictures, shoot videos, make beats, engineer. It's a million motherfuckers that do it. So you gotta really stand out and you gotta really, and not really think about the money once you start, build your name. I tell motherfuckers all the time, build your name first and actually fuck with people, work with people. Like, tell the motherfucker to pull up. You ain't got nobody booked in the studio. Tell the motherfuckers to pull up, let's work on me. Like, we about to get some content. We about to shoot, we about to record. We about to, you hear me? Whatever it is. Hey man, hey, I kid y'all not. This shit might have been so funny. All right. So how he said, you know what I'm saying, when they first started, it was 15 dollars an hour. That's how we met. My bro, Coca Cash, got down. Nigga was like, bro, we'll look for a studio, you know what I'm saying? Cause where we was originally got down going, you know what I'm saying? That shit got down pretty and much. I forgot over. how I met Coca. I don't know, probably through Instagram. Instagram, it was through it was definitely through Shout Instagram. He got you through it was somebody that y'all know that he, you know what I'm saying, got no, through Instagram. Alright. I don't and, know. It could have been, but I know. Oh, money made near. Money made near. That's what it was. It was That's money made. It was money definitely made money made. Yeah. Shout out, man. Shout out to money made. R.I.P. Money made, man. Long live, man. Long live the bad lady, man, for sure. 
But goddamn, yeah, so, and it was crazy. It's like, this nigga stayed 10 minutes on the street. And like, one thing for sure, especially back then, bro, I, I hate driving, bro. I'm not finna go too far. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, fuck it, let go. And then, it was probably like the third or fourth time we ended up going over there recording, Teezy was over there. We are a new TZ from a previous studio that we used to record at. And then we just locked in. And then I kid you, it was probably like a week or two after that. While Coca and TZ like making a song, this nigga got a camera in his hand, learning how to work the camera. I don't, well, I don't, I'm not gonna say learn it. To me, I'm gonna say learning because I've never well, seen yeah. you have you a camera never in your seen hand. Well, around that time? I never seen you with a camera. I just know you was making beats yeah. and engineering. I, I shot videos, but I didn't have a camera at the time because one of my cameras had broke. So I, was, I wasn't making too much money to just go buy a camera and still gotta pay bills and shit. You feel me? So finally got a camera, another camera, and I started back shooting videos and that up the studio some more. You feel me? But every year we just raise the price, it's like five dollars. You feel me? Man, listen, Man, they shit. used to have <laughs> legendary parties on the one way. I kid you not. Like, I'm a clubbing party. ass nigga. Like, yeah. I used to all, bro, me, Coca, no, and a, a million dollar basement party on the one though, way. On the one way, legendary. I fuck with you. I fuck with you. Legendary. Listen, that townhouse used to be packed on all three on floors. Four. We had four floors, nigga. Four. Was... Damn, you right. The extra, yeah. you right. You fact. Four floors. Four floors. Four the extra floors. top, top. Right. Let me get this right. Uh, they were lit, you, lit. You could record, possibly shoot a video, and then go go to the party, possibly hear you. Man, listen. That yeah, house everything. had four or five engineers, every, four or five rooms. Every room uh, had a... Photographer. Every uh, room had a... Two photographers. Every room you record. Right. That's dope. Fact, definitely two photographers. One of the engineers and photographers, he made, the, he did graphic suit. Like, he do graphics too. Shout out to Minor Got It. Like, yeah. like, it was really, like, it always been, like, it was, they always pretty much had house. the one stop. Like, yeah. yeah. And then, like, over the years, we just, like, stayed locked like, in. Yeah. Right, that's what's up. So, so like, what's some advice y'all can give somebody that's young, that's trying hey, to get started? My advice to you, is take that fucking risk. Stop thinking too hard about it. Like, I think hard on every move I do, but I slap myself into it. And in the end, it work out. Like, just be consistent. And if you starting, like I said, if this is what you really want to do, don't look at it for the money. Like, really do that shit and really get people to come and really go and work with people. Not for money, but you feel me? If you really want to work, go work. Like, put that work in, build your catalog, build your content, then put that price on them folks. Like, you feel me? Definitely. I ain't got no choice but to drop that. Shit, I'm just gonna piggyback on what he said for real because like that's like the really shit for real. Like, you gonna be broke. You gonna go through shit. You know what I'm saying? You already don't broke. So the fact that don't try exactly. to force it, nigga. Got that like, fuck whatever. You already broke. So go do that shit. Like you gonna <laughs> have to do, do free shit. You gotta build yourself. You gotta build a portfolio in whatever you do. Whether you doing nails, whether you goddamn you doing hair, whether you're an artist, engineer, producer, look, whatever, bro. You gotta thing. build your portfolio up. Another thing, stay consistent. Like, if that's what you want to do, you need to be doing something towards that every day. Like, every day, 10,000 hours. Even if you ain't got no goal. I ain't necessarily had goals. I told you, I just was thrown into this shit. Like, I wasn't trying to be no studio owner or nothing like that or take responsibilities and shit. Yeah, but you feel me? Definitely never thought I'd be selling life insurance or have a smoke shop. Like, I really have a tobacco license in my name. Never thought about that. Legal right. hustle. <laughs> Legal, like, you know what I'm saying? I never in my life. So say there is, most definitely. Like, you're going to have to. You know what I'm saying? And again, and you're this. going to take L's. You're, you're gonna going to be L's. broke. But the L's, it ain't losses. You're going to learn lessons. That's what L means, lessons. Man, you're going to learn lessons. Two L, learn lessons, man. Every day. You Love and loyalty, man. RP Money Made, man, because that's how we met. <laughs> definitely. Right. Mm. Okay, so Seriously, man. Oh, I mean, I really, ha <laughs> I really have a question to follow that. I really, I fuck with that, man. You know, it, it's kind of difficult to find like people who are like-minded, like who have the same, who like have a common same goal, and like really make things. Yeah, work. and look, that's another thing. You gotta surround yourself around people who, Max. like, that's something I always prayed for when I was a little kid, cause I was so advanced when I was a little kid. Like, I used to do everything. I'm talking about. 
I want to go build the wall up, if I want I used to watch my pops a lot, and he used to do everything, so. Hey, you definitely ain't missing your contract skill. Hey, this, bro, listen, this, bro, I watched this nigga build a booth, like, three times, like, and I'm a bunch hand, of other, do a, a bunch of other person, shit, so like. Just off watching my pops, but. I used to pray to have people around me that can be on my same level or better, you feel me? And now I feel like I got people around me who really doing it. Like, I ain't, you ain't got to depend on me. You probably got to depend on me to run the whole studio, but you ain't got to depend on me to goddamn keep this shit going type shit, like, you feel me? Got a team. Yeah, yeah. Now you definitely need that, especially in this damn time. Like, you can get shit done by yourself, but when you got people that strong and, and it's a help. With my team, that's a, that's a big help. Like, everybody, literally everybody. Everybody get a win. Right, ain't no weak, ain't no, ain't nobody weak on the team. Like if you on the team, you, you got your role. And that's major important. And that's the last thing I'm, and pretty much the last thing I'm pretty much gonna speak on. Like when building your team. <clears throat> all right, every team, whether it's basketball, football, hockey, whatever, like every, it's a bunch of different positions. Everybody plays their position. They play their role. Find a position, pick a position, and don't do what the next man do just because you in your you have a pride or ego feeling like, oh, cause he doing it, I can do it. Nigga, no. You're not likable. Nobody likes your fucking personality. Nigga, you don't sound good on a fucking track. You you're not talk telling the truth. I'm sorry. Letting this nigga do his thing. Even yeah. if that nigga lying. And he but nigga, he sounds better, he more marketable. Get the fucking money. This is a music business. And you know what I'm saying? Or whatever you doing, like, you everybody gotta play a role. You know what I'm saying? When you got the table, when you go to a dinner table, you got a table, chairs, plates, napkins, forks, cups. You got a salad fork, you got a dinner fork. Nigga, you got two forks that and they don't do the fucking same shit. Play your fucking position. Sorry. Man, never mind. <laughs> play your motherfucking position. Hey man. Y'all niggas out here ain't working as team members. You gotta learn how to get your team skills up, man. It's better when you got a team, cause you can actually achieve the dream. But um, with that being said, we got a little um game we're gonna do with y'all real quick. It's called um What Comes to Your Mind. I bet. So we gonna do like a little ten on real quick. Alright, so the first one is camera. You said what come to my mind? Whatever first thing come to your mind. Camera. Shooter. Camera? Pictures? Laptop. Internet. Damn, we gotta keep going? Yeah, he said 10 of them. Webcam. Red. Who? The color red. Blood. Shit, this shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Studio. Music. Light. Hot wings. Ew. Lemon pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Million dollar basement. Yeah. The brand, the business. I need to go get something right now. <laughs> the color green. Money. Growth. YouTube. Weed. Money. <laughs> Casamigos. Fucked up. That shit. Right. Bed. Drunk. Sleep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I bet. So look, we gonna end out on that, man. We appreciate y'all being here. My dog. Thank y'all for being our guest today. And um, let them know where they can follow y'all at. Man, y'all can follow me at Cool Beats, K O O Beats, at Million Dollar Basement. Man, y'all come tap in, y'all come book. Subscribe, YouTube, Instagram, all that, man. Shit, y'all can out there follow me at the number one finesse guy, guy G A W D, and also at Backstreet Smoke, spelled all the way out. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all book with the basement, you know what I'm saying? And guess what? You ain't gotta worry about being late to your session, cause you gotta stop at the store for the snacks, blunts, drinks, and none of that, cause we got a store in the shop. You know, a store in the studio, you know what I'm saying? Backstreet Smokes, you know what I'm saying? Pull hey, up, come shop, on. book with the basement, man. The real one-stop shop. We got everything you need. Everything. Podcasts, videos, studio, beats. All right. Come get it. Everything. Hey, like we got somebody want to shout out to me in that basement real quick. Go ahead. <laughs>
Shout it out. Shout out to Million Dollar Basement. Baby, be going to fucking. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We lit. Yeah, that's lit. That's dope. Yeah. Nah, for sure, All man. Right, so look, man, we appreciate y'all. And again, y'all already know where to catch them at. So um, we gonna catch y'all next time. This was the breakdown. Your boy GTM Two J. Yes, sir. Queso. Yo, man, appreciate y'all. We gonna catch y'all next time. Appreciate y'all, man. Down till it's break down, break down. Break it down. Down till it's break down, break down. Break it down.